Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, this video we're going to talk about wiring. Uh, I got some tips and tricks, what wires to use, what I suggest, and uh, how to find an amperage draw on a certain uh, device. It can be anything. So uh, I got some tricks. Let's get to it. So when you're planning your wiring, uh, you want to make sure that you use the right uh, gauge wire, the right relays, the right fuse. And uh, I always like to lay everything out on, on a plan. So I did the engine harness last year and everything was laid out on a plan like this. So if you're thinking of redoing your engine harness, I suggest you lay everything out and you can get the measurements of the wires and you can get the actual amperage of the device and then you can calculate based on length what uh, what gauge wire you need. Um, I like to use high quality wire and the best wire that money can buy for a race car is called Spec 55 or Tevzel wire. I can show you a bit here how it looks. So this is how it looks. It's very, very thin and it's very, very light. This is the white one is 22 gauge. The black one is 20 gauge. This are, these are the sizes I use the most. And if you can see here, everything on the sensor side is, uh, is 22 gauge. And then when I'm powering some stuff up, I use 20 and 14. Um, also for very important sensors, I use Milspec shielded wire. And uh, this would have a shield on the outside of it just so it doesn't pick up any noise. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I took this out, I'm gonna redo it. And I, I, I took some wires out from the OEM engine harness just to clean it up. But I'll show you this new battery I got. This thing is stupid light. So thank you, Gold Lithium. This is a 16 volt battery. It comes with the charger. It's only eight pounds, like super light. Uh, I removed the alternator, so we don't have an alternator anymore. So we're gonna have to charge that every time we do a pass, but um, I'm pretty excited for that. So I'll show you a little bit how to get an amperage draw from a device so i'll give you an example we're gonna use so i have a solenoid here this is the uh three, three port mag valve that i'm using to shift the shifter so i got the two separate co2s here so we'll open the one for the shifter and uh, i'll grab my gauge a meter simple fluke meter and uh, some people are probably scared how to use this but you all you do is you grab this red one and you put it on the 10 amp here and it's a common ground and then you put it to uh, DC voltage amperage and then it's gonna tell you what amps is drawing so what we do is the black side of the meter goes here Stick that in there somehow. There you go. So now I'm going to grab one side of the solenoid on the red one, and then the other side would be on the battery. See? And let's change gear here so we can see it. It'll actually change gear. So I'm going to show you the amperage so you're going to see kind of what it draws. Let's get a good view of it here. So 0.6 and the shifter works. See, so let's move this forward again. Let's try it again. So 0.65 amps. Okay, so 
So you see how I did it? So the black one is on the, neg on the negative of the battery. The one side of the wire is on the red prong. And on the other side of the vice is I'm giving it power. And that tells you the amperage of that device. So what does that do? So this way you can, if, if the device doesn't specify the amount of amperage that it uses or current, um, you need to know that to be able to determine what gauge wire you need because you know all this wire adds up and if you're gonna put a 10 gauge wire on a little solenoid like that it's wasted weight and it's wasted energy for the battery to transfer that voltage from one side of the pole to the other so it's kind of a waste so I'll leave a link below for this wire I get this wire from uh, there's a few places you can get it from you can get it from uh, digikey.ca d-i-g-i key.ca that's kind of where i get it because i'm in canada you can get it from uh, mauser.ca I'll, I'll leave the links below to these two uh and, and a part number of this wire because it's kind of hard to find but i suggest you use high quality wire when you're wiring a race car like this i'm gonna save about 35 to 40 pounds on just wiring by using light wire this is called tevzel so it's it's very light and it's it, it you can have high current by such a thin wire i also like to use these uh deutsch connectors they're not that expensive and i think they're very clean so as you can see here all mil spec wire shielded all the sensor have shielded wires yeah so i'm gonna clean this up and uh We'll see how it looks. Hey guys. So I spent a day on it, actually two days, and I cleaned up a big mess from the harness. So I removed that chunk from the uh, OEM harness. So it's a little bit of a mess, but um, you know, wiring is a, it's not easy. <laughs> so bear with me. Anyway, so I hooked up everything and uh, I got the Motec all set up. I powered it up and uh, we tested the uh, the gear position sensor so I had to set it all up and it works. Yeah, good. So next up I'm going to have to do the loom going towards the back. I already uh, kind of made it. So I'm going to have to, I'm waiting for some more wire. Uh, I got a bunch of stuff back here. So there's the shock sensors, the travel sensors. There's the drive shaft speed. Um, I got the tail lights I have to wire up. What else? I got the, uh, the shock CO2 air mag valve. Uh, there's the, the transmission cooler fans. There's the uh, shutoff switch. So I'm gonna have to run all that from, uh, from the back to the front. So I'm waiting for some wire. So hopefully it's here tomorrow and then we can finish, uh, finish the whole harness thing. So stay tuned. All right guys, a bit more wiring. Uh, I made a pigtail for the tail lights. So there's a plug there and a plug there. And I joined it with a three pin Deutsch connector. I removed like the reverse light, the signal. I don't need any of that stuff. So all we have is the brake lights and the parking lights. That's why it's only three pins. So that's done. I'm waiting for some wire uh, for the drive shaft sensor. So once that comes, then we can run the loom. I also added uh, a third fuse box. I know ideally I want to get a PDM, but unfortunately I can't. I can't afford a PDM right now. That way we can kind of clean all this stuff up. So this is going to have to do for now. So basically the ECU kind of sends a signal to these relays. And uh, they're also fused. And then you have the outputs that go to this, this harness here. So this is everything. And then I added a secondary harness here. So this comes from... The other fuse box, so we got, for example, uh, injectors, ignition, uh, primer pump, uh, and all sorts of other stuff, nitrous, you know. So here I had to add 
another relay box because we don't have an ignition key anymore so and i removed the uh the oem fuse box that was in the engine bay so there was a fuse box over there so that's gone and there was another fuse box down here that's also gone all the harness that that used to go around the car that's all gone that thing was like 45 50 pounds so the 50 pounds that we took out all we're putting in is this little fuse box here because the oem fuse box had all sorts of junk in it that i haven't used in years so i had to all go so yeah so this is an ignition relay so now instead of a key all i have is this little button here so you press this it powers up that relay and that relay powers up the ecu the display uh the keypad and it powers up all these other relays that need ignition so you have you know you have ignition you have uh, uh line lock for the brakes there's uh lights there's parking lights brake light uh, there was something else oh this is the ignition for all the solenoids so there's going to be two solenoids back here these are for the shocks there's a solenoid over there for the shifter so i'm powering everything up with that one relay so there's a solenoid over there that's going to control the uh the shifter so it's looking good the wiring is kind of tedious but um i think we'll stop here I'm waiting for some wires, like I said, that's going to be here on Monday. Uh, what I'm excited about, uh, carbon doors, the carbon hood, and the Lexan will be here later today. So once those come in a couple of hours, I'm going to start working on that, and I'll make another video. So for now, peace easy, guys. Take care.